Hi friends, let's talk. I have been thinking a lot lately about mental health and physical health. And for 29 years of my life, I have focused strictly on the physical health. I have never once tried to focus on what was in my little noggin. I have always just tried to change how I look physically to people because I know what's going on in my head. I know what my issues are and those aren't things people can see. However, they manifest as things people can see, AKA my disordered eating, which leads me to have these huge weight fluctuations. Um, and as well as my ADHD, like if you know me, you, you know I have ADHD symptoms. So like the things that go on in our head, they manifest themselves in our everyday lives, no matter what we would like to think. <laughs> So I kind of want to talk to you guys about what has been happening in my head and in my journey ever since I started therapy this summer. Now, this video is not me telling you, you need to go to therapy and everything will be fixed, or you need to go to therapy and your physical health is going to get a hundred times better. Um, I am just sharing my experience of my mindset shifts and how therapy has helped me to get recentered with myself and Therapy might not be for you. It might not be what you need, um, but I would just like to share my story. So I have had a lot of stuff happen in my life and I never realized how much it presented itself um, in my mental health and in my eating habits until I started going to therapy. A lot of the things that we talk about are centered around my anxiety and ADHD specifically. However, there are a lot of times where we're talking about things that I can implement for my anxiety and ADHD and in my head I'm like, this like directly correlates to my overeating and my binge eating, like how I self-sabotage when I am feeling less than or when I'm having those anxious moments. I am soothing myself with food because that's all that I've ever known how to do because I have never been taught how to cope with grief and I have an older family um, so I have been attending funerals and having people in my life pass away so from the time I was like three years old you know up until a couple of years ago I've had family members um, passing and I've just never been taught how to handle that grief um, so when I'm sad, I eat. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way um, with really any emotion. If I'm sad, happy, anything. I, I just eat. That's, that's the way that I soothe myself and I congratulate myself is by eating. I've also had um, some pretty significant trauma and I do plan on sharing that with you guys um, probably next year because I feel like it is very important to share and destigmatize. But that whole instance was just something that like rocked my world. And not having those coping mechanisms and, you know, things in place um, to help me overcome that situation, um, that instance has been a huge issue for me over the last seven years, eight years actually, eight years. Um, so I knew that I needed to go to therapy really just to hash that out um, and try to get more understanding of what I can do for myself now um, to try to overcome those things. And as in doing that, I have realized that I have used disordered eating to cope. And I know you hear people say it all the time that yes, your trauma and things like that affect your eating, but you really don't, I didn't really realize how much it did until I started delving deeper and started to try to make changes in my brain. I know I mentioned this a little bit um, in another one of the vlogs, but I 
kind of had like my breaking point over the summer of like I need to fix this and keto is just one part of the puzzle and it's not fixing everything else you know it's a 50 piece puzzle here and this is keto so there's 49 other pieces that are working in touch here and I'm only focused on this tiny one right here and over the summer I had an instance of basically a binge eating relapse I completely fell off the wagon and I know exactly what it was triggered by now, um, but I had another instance where I was hiding food from my family, and I have never dealt with that in my relationship with my boyfriend, and it was very kind of like eye-opening to be like, wow, why am I doing this, you know? So I needed to get help. I needed, I, I needed outside help. I needed somebody to first off validate me and <laughs> that I'm not insane and like I'm not crazy my feelings are valid, my emotions are valid, like I just, I needed somebody to tell me that this isn't normal, but it is normal. Like other people struggle with this, it's not just me. And the other thing I needed to hear was that you don't have to live like this, you don't have to binge eat to cope with your emotions, you don't have to have raging anxiety and depression and you don't have to live with unmanaged ADHD. There are skills to be put in place that can help that. And I didn't realize how much putting those strategies in place for my anxiety was going to help my eating. I didn't realize how much putting in place those strategies for my ADHD was going to help my eating and my mindset. Now, I've been in therapy since I think June um, and it's now December and I'm honestly like the last two months I have noticed a difference like that is six months worth of work and the last two months I've started to notice a difference. So you have to put in some legwork in the front and you have to do the things and you have to deal with your brain trying to fight you the entire way. But over these last two months I have noticed that I'm thinking of food differently. I am able to eat non-keto foods and not completely go off of the rails. I'm just able to focus more on all of it, on my mental health and my physical health. So I started this channel and my journey to health in 2020, October of 2020, and I did a very good job for a year and a half. I did very well, I stuck to keto, I was still overeating on keto foods, but I was feeling really, really good and I had lost 40 pounds and everything was going very well until it wasn't, <laughs> until my brain was telling me that it needed help too. My brain was literally yelling at me like, you are only focusing on what you're putting into your mouth, but you're not focusing on the racing thoughts. You're only focusing on the meals you ate this week, but you're not focusing on the fact that you just slept for 15 plus hours and could not get out of bed. You're focusing on getting healthy when in reality, my brain was not healthy at all. And there is no way, there is absolutely no way you can be completely healthy if you're not focusing on your mental health. Somebody explained trauma to me as big T's and little T's. And not everybody has big T's, most people have little t's and most people have enough little t's to equal a big t. In my experience, I have little t's and a big t and I wasn't focusing on how to heal from those and my brain was literally screaming at me and I just ignored it because I was doing so well with my physical health. There's no way that I needed to focus on my mental health. But you cannot be healthy if you are only focusing on your physical health and you are putting your mental health to the side. You can't. And that might be an unpopular opinion, but your physical health is always going to be trash, especially if you cope with disordered eating and you're not focusing on it mentally, just physically. So since the last two months that I have realized that I am actually doing better mentally and now starting to do better physically, um, I feel very much ready to take back control of my physical health as well because I let that go to the wayside for a little bit while I got my mental health under control, which was needed. So I am very much so ready to make them aligned, you know, 
for a while it was my physical health, my mental health. And then for another while is my mental health and my physical health. But now I, I need them to balance out somewhere because I, I feel at that point where I can just really start to hone in on who I am and who I want to be. You know, who I want to be in a year. What goals do I want to have achieved in a year? And I'm not just specifically talking about weight. I'm talking about mental health goals, physical health goals, all of those things combined. So if you are somebody who is on a journey to health and you are truly struggling, you either keep relapsing with your disordered eating or you just cannot stick to something or you keep failing. You don't really fail until you stop trying. But I highly encourage you to find out why. Really find out why. I don't think it's because you're not meal planning every week. I don't think it's because you're not meal prepping every week. I think it's because your brain is telling you that it needs a little bit of help too. So that is just something that has been heavy on my mind and I wanted to share with you guys because it's pretty important. And if we're not taking care of our noggin, it's, it's going to come back around one day. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate your support and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.